Hello everyone, welcome back to the SBRE. In today's video, we're taking a look at the 2009 sci-fi fantasy movie, Avatar, starring Sam Worthington and Zoe Zeldania. Avatar is a worldwide record-breaking sci-fi movie that tells us the story of an ex-Navy soldier, Jake Sully, who gets the chance to travel to the planet of Pandora, where he's sent on a mission to earn the trust of the native people. But as he learns their way, he finds himself wanting to stay with them instead of returning to his homeworld. Make sure to watch the video till the end so you don't miss out on anything. Now just sit back, relax, and enjoy. The movie starts with Jake thinking back to a time when he was in the Navy, when he could walk and protect his country. But his dream is interrupted by the reality where he is handicapped and unable to walk due to a disc injury. He hates how his life is right now, but still somehow manages to enjoy himself. One day, he was fooling around in a bar when he saw a woman getting abused by her boyfriend. Despite the odds, he immediately wheeled his way over to the couple and threw himself at the man, starting a fight. He was thrown out of the club into the back alley, but he was feeling great after that. But his happiness was interrupted when two men dressed in suits came looking for him. The men informed him of his twin brother Tommy's death and offered him a chance to take over Tommy's contract since their genes were almost identical. Tommy was training to be part of the new Avatar project on the planet Pandora, but suddenly died. And because making an Avatar was expensive, the company thought it was best to offer Jake a contract even though he was handicapped. It doesn't take a lot of convincing for Jake to agree. He would do anything to escape his current miserable lifestyle. The next scene shows Jake sleeping inside of a hibernation pod, where he wakes up five years and nine months later. They were near the planet of Pandora. They were instructed to keep their masks on because the air of this planet would make a human unconscious in 20 seconds and kill them in 4 minutes. They landed on a base that the humans had built on the planet. It was protected by army officers and high-end machines to keep the natives away. Jake instantly became an outcast among the people because he didn't care much about it. He also took an instant liking to the colonel who was in charge of the army and security. His hard training reminded Jake of his time in the navy. On his way to the lab, he meets Norm, another Avatar driver, who had trained with his brother. Norm explains everything to Jake, how their job was to drive the Avatar and help with a special mission. He then shows him his Avatar, and it looked exactly like his brother and himself. But things wouldn't be so easy for Jake, because Dr. Grace, who was in charge of the lab, instantly disliked him. She already believed he didn't belong here, but when she learns that he has no training whatsoever, she furiously storms over to complain to her boss, Parker. But the conversation doesn't go in her favor, and instead, Parker threatens her that she better come up with a plan to make a truce with the Na'vi people before it comes to war. Grace has no choice but to work with Jake. When Jake wakes up in his avatar form, he's delighted to see that he can freely move again. In his excitement, he leaves the lab and runs outside, where he sees many other avatars playing around. He meets Grace's avatar form, and she's very impressed by the control Jake has on his avatar, despite the lack of training. He's getting ready to go on his first mission when he's called in by the colonel, who asks him to be a double agent and report everything he learns about the Navi people back to him. In return, he promises that he would help Jake get back his legs when they're back on Earth. Tempted by the offer and also wanting to please the colonel, he agrees to the deal. Trudy, the only pilot who knows her way around the jungle of Pandora, drops them off on their mission and they cautiously make their way deeper into the jungle. There, they come across a school that Grace had built to communicate with and educate the locals about Earth. The school was empty now and Jake spots gunshots in the window but when he asks Grace about it, she dismisses him. Jake is fascinated with the plants and starts playing around with them when a wild hammerhead started to advance towards him. He was ready to shoot, but Grace stopped him because the shell of the hammerhead is too strong to be broken by bullets. The hammerhead was about to charge him when he suddenly stopped. Jake thought he managed to scare him, but when he turned around, he saw another cat-like animal named Thantor ready to attack him. This time, Grace tells him to run for his life, and he does, but no matter what he did or where he hid, he couldn't get the animal off his tail. In the end, he had to jump down a waterfall, losing any chance of getting back to the base by night. Grace and Norm try searching for him, but when it gets dark, they have no choice but to return without him. Unknown to him, Jake had wandered a little too close to the Navi people's territory. We see a Navi woman aiming at him. When a white flower spirit sits on her hand, she looks surprised but doesn't attempt to harm him anymore. As the jungle grows dark, Jake lights a fire and sees that he's surrounded by Viper Wolf. He tries to run away at first, but he's outnumbered and has no choice but to fight. 
The Viper Wolf was about to kill him when an arrow saves him. The Na'vi woman from earlier, Neytiri, had saved him. She then blames Jake for making so much noise and lighting a fire in the forest. He doesn't understand what he did wrong, but seeing as Neytiri saved him, he decided to follow her. But she doesn't want him to come with her, and they nearly get into a fight when the same white spirit appears again and this time covers Jake's whole body in light. Seeing that the white spirit chose Jake, Neytiri decides to help him. They're making their way through the forest when suddenly a rope swings out from the dark and wraps around Jake's leg, making him fall. He's now under attack by none other than the Na'vi people. The group leader, Tsute, is about to hurt Jake when Neytiri stops him and speaks in her native language. Tsute reluctantly agrees to take Jake to his village and let their village head decide what to do with him. The head of the village is also Neytiri's father, and her mother, Moat, was the spiritual medium of the village who intercepted the will of Ava who was their goddess. Neytiri tries to talk her father out of harming Jake, but he's reluctant to set him free. Her mother then comes forward and examines him. Jake tells them that he's there to learn their ways, and though some villagers protested against it, Moat decided to give him a chance and assigned Neytiri to teach him. When he wakes up again, he finds himself back in the lab. He feels accomplished as he fills Grace up with every detail of his journey. He also reports everything back to the Colonel and Parker, who further explain to him the whole purpose of the Avatar mission was to gain the villagers' trust and convince them to leave their village because their village was sitting on top of trillions of dollars worth of the unobtainium metal, which is what they're here for. Grace educates him about the names and hierarchy of the Na'vi people before he leaves again. He returns to the village and learns their way of living. Tsute is still trying to drive him away, but Jake brushes all his comments off, making him even more furious. When he's not in the village, he spends his time plotting strategies to destroy the big tree that the Navi village rests on. One of the scientists sees him with the colonel and tells Grace, who then decides to move their mission to a secluded base on the floating Hallelujah Mountains. Jake realizes that Grace is aware of his meetings with the colonel, but she couldn't say or do anything about it because she needs him to communicate with the villagers. He starts spending more and more time with Neytiri, learning their language and practicing how to fight. Neytiri shows him her mountain banshee that every capable Navi warrior gets, and once they tame the bird, it forms a bond between them that lasts a lifetime. Jake is eager to get his own banshee, but he must prove himself to be a capable hunter to do so. He's been spending less time in his real body, and it was taking a toll on him. He loses a noticeable amount of weight before Grace intervenes and warns him to take a break from his avatar. Jake sees a picture of her with Neytiri and her sister on Grace's table and asks her again about the incident that happened at the school. Grace opens up and tells him how Neytiri's sister and a bunch of natives were angry about the clear-cutting of the forest and set a bulldozer on fire to protest. They were then followed by a bunch of troopers to the school where they killed Neytiri's sister in front of her and opened fire at the others. She managed to get most of the kids out in time, but they never came back again. Back in the Navi village, Jake had made his first kill, and Neytiri declares him ready to tame a mountain banshee for himself. They climb one of the Hallelujah Mountains where the banshee's nest is, and Jake set out to tame one. The mountain banshee that chooses him was a fierce one that nearly threw Jake down the mountain, but he somehow manages to pull himself up and link their bond together. He had finally earned the trust of the villagers and requests Moat to let Grace into the village, making the children and Grace equally happy. He had also formed a special bond with Neytiri after spending so much time together. One day, they were flying together when they were attacked by a divine bird named Toruk, who feeds on the mountain banshees. They manage to escape, and later Neytiri tells Jake the legend about the great Toruk, who is a symbol of greatness and victory. Making a bond with Toruk was considered nearly impossible, and those people who succeeded in doing so were known as Toruk Maktao, and are considered legendary heroes that can lead people to victory, even at a time of sorrow. Jake was starting to hate going back to his reality. Now he just wanted to be one of the Na'vi people. The colonel visits him and reminds him of his true purpose. He also warns him to hurry along and move the people because the authorities are getting impatient. Jake takes part in a ritual that officially makes him one of the Na'vi people. And the same night, Neytiri takes him to their ancestral trees where they can hear the spirits of their ancestors talking. 
As they're under the ancestral trees, Jake confesses to Natiri about his feelings, and they both mate. But the next day, Natiri wakes up to the sound of bulldozers destroying their ancestral trees. Jake also wakes up after a while and starts to destroy the signal transmitter of the bulldozer in an effort to stop them. In the headquarters, Parker and the Colonel realize that Jake had betrayed them. Furious by his betrayal, the Colonel storms into their remote base and wakes both Grace and Jake from their sleep. On the other hand, Jake was trying to warn the village people and convince them to move before the attack again when he was pulled out of his avatar. Grace tries to convince Parker to put off the war, but the Colonel plays one of Jake's logs where he was saying that the villagers won't ever make any negotiation with them and that they would never leave their village. Jake had just made things easier for the Colonel, who had always wanted a war. It also doesn't help when the Na'vi people burn all their machinery and kill all their soldiers in revenge for destroying their sacred trees. Using this as an excuse, the Colonel convinces Parker to let him attack the village. Trudy warns the others about the Colonel's plan, and Grace pleads with Parker to give them one more chance to talk to the people before they start a war. Parker also didn't want to order a war against the natives, and so he agreed to give them one hour to talk the natives into leaving. Jake and Grace desperately try to make the natives leave the village. He warns them that they would definitely attack the village and kill them all if they didn't leave. But then he confesses that he was sent here to learn their ways and earn their trust so that when the right time came, he could tell them to leave and they would believe him because he was one of them. Neytiri feels betrayed that Jake planned all of this and doesn't believe him when he tries to convince her that things were different now and that he was in love with her and the forest. Jake and Grace are immediately captured by the villagers who tie them up, not caring about their life. They continue to plead with the villagers to leave. Moments later, dozens of aircraft hovered over their village and aimed for the big tree where their village was located. They tried to fight off the aircraft with bow and arrows, but when the aircraft started to fire at the villagers, they quickly realized that this wasn't a war they could win. Neytiri's father immediately ordered everyone to flee into the forest. Neytiri looks like she wants to free Jake and Grace, but leaves without helping them. Moat, on the other hand, understands that this was out of their control and asks Jake for help. Inside the aircraft, the colonel had ordered everyone to load up heavy missiles and aim for the tree's roots so they could uproot the tree. Jake realizes their plan immediately and starts to evacuate people away from the tree. All the aircraft shoot on command, except for Trudy, who turns around and leaves, refusing to kill innocent people. The plan was executed. The tree uprooted and fell on many native people, killing them. The Navi village was finally destroyed. The colonel happily orders everyone to return to the base, while the Navi people mourned the loss of their loved ones. One of the casualties was Neytiri's father. Jake tries to comfort Neytiri, but she blames him for everything and pushes him away. Back at the headquarters, Parker and everyone else is watching the attack live. Parker gives orders to remove Grace and Jake from the machine. Norm tries to stop them, but is easily overpowered. Following the incident, Grace, Norm, and Jake are helplessly locked up and kept under strict watch. Luckily for them, Trudy comes to their rescue. She frees them, and they make a plan to escape to the remote base in the Hallelujah Mountains, but as they are sneaking into Grace's plane, they are spotted by the Colonel, who immediately begins firing at them. They manage to escape, but Grace was shot and badly wounded. Only Trudy knew her way around the foggy Hallelujah Mountains, so it was relatively safe to make it even safer when they decided to move the base into the jungle. Jake wakes up in his avatar again and finds himself in the destroyed village. He knows the people had probably taken refuge under the sacred tree of Ava in the mountain, but he also knows that they would never trust him again unless he did something extraordinary to gain their trust. With that thought in mind, he calls for his mountain banshee and they went hunting for Toruk. The legend says Toruk is the almighty bird of the sky, and no one can challenge him. So this also meant that Toruk only ever stared ahead and never looks up for threats. He positions himself above the bird and jumps on its back. And after a fierce struggle, he finally manages to form a bond with him. He had conquered the Toruk and hence became the Toruk Maktao, a legendary figure that the Navi people can trust. He goes to the Tree of Ava, and the villagers are shocked to see Jake on top of Turuk, but immediately trust Jake again. He reconciles with Neytiri and asks Moat to save Grace. That night, they start a ritual where Ava would transfer Grace's soul into her avatar's body. But unfortunately, the ritual fails because Grace's body was too weak and they didn't have enough time. Saddened by the loss, Jake vows to drive the humans away from their homes once and for all. Together, they fly around asking other clans for help, and everyone agrees to help because Turukmak Tao was calling for them. 
back in the headquarters, the colonel is giving a speech to his soldiers asking them to get ready for another war. He's seen the number of Navi people increase over the day, and if it continues, they would definitely lose against them. And so he decides to attack first, and this time, his target is the Sacred Tree of Ava. He plans on destroying the natives' belief that Ava will protect them from every danger. Jake, Trudy, and Norm get a message from Grace's friend, who tells them the soldier's strategy and the time of their attack. That night, Jake visits Ava and links his bond with her, hoping she would listen to his warning. He asks Ava to look into Grace's memory so she can protect herself and her people from danger. The next day, the soldiers are ready with weapons, but as they're traveling through the Hallelujah Mountain, they don't see anyone. The colonel warns everyone to stay alert, and at that moment, hundreds of mountain banshees attack their plane. And on the ground, the soldiers are attacked by hundreds of Navi people on horses. The fight was neck to neck. Trudy was more focused on attacking the colonel's plane, but unfortunately, he managed to get a hit on her, blowing up her plane. On the ground, Neytiri has lost her mountain banshee and finds herself surrounded by ground soldiers as she watches her people die around her. Su Te manages to get inside the plane filled with explosives, but is immediately shot down and falls into the forest. Norm too gets shot down by the ground soldier and dies before waking up in the cabin. The situation was getting worse again. Natiri was concerned, but not wanting to die like a coward, she gets ready to attack again. Right at that moment, the ground shook under her, and a bunch of hammerheads barreled towards the soldiers, and the planes get attacked by hundreds of mountain banshees. Ava had listened to Jake and was protecting her people and herself. The colonel still isn't backing down and heads straight for the tree of Ava, but Jake is quicker. He gets on top of the plane of explosives with a bomb and manages to destroy it. He was going to do the same with the colonel's aircraft, but he managed to escape on a machine. He doesn't want to lose to Jake, and he goes searching for their cabin, so he can kill the body of the real Jake. He was about to attack the cabin when Natiri comes riding on the back of a Thantor and stops him. They fight, and he kills the Thantor, and Natiri gets stuck under the body. He's about to kill her when Jake comes to her rescue. They engage in a fierce fight, but the machine was just too strong, and the colonel was more interested in killing Jake's real body. He breaks into the cabin and smashes a machine, but fortunately, Jake wasn't inside it. Jake's avatar blocks his way and gets him away from the cabin, but he's still too weak. The colonel has him by his hair and is about to slice his neck when Neytiri attacks him with two arrows, killing him. She had finally managed to free herself, but because the cabin's glass protection was smashed, Pandora's poisonous air had affected Jake, who wakes up in his machine. He searches around for a mask, but falls down and stops breathing. Natiri comes in and helps him put on the mask, but breaks down in tears when he doesn't respond. But seconds later, he starts breathing again and gets back into the machine. They then find Sute, who was heavily wounded. He knew he was already beyond help, so he asks Jake to take care of the villagers and lead them before he dies. In the final scene, we see that the natives have taken over the headquarters and are sending the humans back to Earth. Jake is back in his human body again, and he's making his last blog as a human, because he would be reborn again that day. That night, we see the Navi people doing a ritual to transfer Jake's soul into his avatar. The human body lays dead in front of Ava, as his avatar opens his eyes. That was it for today, guys. We hope you enjoyed the video. What are your thoughts about this movie? Would you watch it? Have a movie you want us to recap? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this.